Corey Ford and Leith Dawes saved for years to purchase an apartment, a two-bedder in a ten-storey building in southwest Sydney. We've got a really large wraparound veranda which is just wonderful in summer. It was a place that we wanted to call home and um, yeah, something that we wanted to have for a long time. But within months of moving into the vicinity towers, they noticed the first signs of building defects. Oh yeah, wow, the water's already in there. Oh uh, yeah, so just a few minutes of we're in the shower and it uh, floods up the bottom of the frame. In, um, the, in the wall cavity. Yeah. I mean, we bought this place um, with two bathrooms for a reason and um, yeah, now we can't use one of them. Last month, a structural engineer confirmed their worst fears. His report, commissioned by the owners, found serious structural issues and said that if there was an earthquake, the building could collapse. I was um, incredibly concerned um, for my safety, Leith's safety and the safety of um, other occupants um, in the building. As soon as I realised the situation that we were in, um, yeah, I decided to pack some of our stuff just in case. Sorry. The building's developer, Toplays, has rejected this report's findings, claiming they were not credible. The problem is much bigger than just this tower. A recent survey by the Strata Community Association found residents living in almost 200 high-rise towers reported serious defects. Based on that sample, the state's building commissioner estimates up to 40% of all high-rise towers could require repairs. Well, they're not good numbers and uh, we had to really take that back to the industry and say, well, here's the evidenced reality. So if you want to change the dial, you have to accept this reality. There's been really no accountability for people who've managed to avoid their responsibilities. Our major cities have been transformed by the high-rise apartment boom over the past decade. Sydney is going up, it is not going out. And more and more people are going to be moving into apartments. But as demand for apartment living surged, major cracks began to surface in the state's building standards. Residents of the crumbling Opal Tower were hoping for answers today. Christmas was cancelled for hundreds of residents their brand new homes falling apart. Unit values have plummeted and insurance has skyrocketed. Scenes of people having to flee their own homes at the Opal Tower first exposed the magnitude of the problem. When you get that email that there are defects in your building, what happens is we end up going through a process that turns your life upside down. Three years on, Opal resident Shady Iskandar says residents are still trapped in a never-ending legal battle. The only way to have justice is to go through the court system. And that court system is extremely arduous. We are at this stage in excess of $6 million that we have had to raise from our pockets and coming together. It's disgusting. It's appalling. I mean, what we are doing is ruining the lives of hard-working mums and dads. The Opal Tower evacuation sparked a parliamentary inquiry into building standards, chaired by Greens MP David Shoebridge. What our inquiry found was that we need to reverse this deregulation. We need to stop this trend towards privatisation of the oversight of the building industry. What we've noticed, particularly in the last five years, is the effect of that is now being felt in a wave of defects across particularly the multi-level apartment industry. The inquiry led to the establishment of an industry watchdog, the New South Wales Building Commissioner. Some of them are using the Building Code of Australia incorrectly. The Commissioner says he's using his new powers to stamp out questionable practices. Quite often we see projects where litigation's been running. Some developers are really bullies 
and I want to make it very clear to developers, I know who you are, I know who you're bullying, and we will be coming to you. Commissioner Chandler says his audits target construction projects developed by companies with a chequered history. Our ability to pick someone who is likely to have multiple serious defects now is laser sharp. Because you're targeting the repeat offenders? Totally. The Commissioner has revealed that he's scrutinising several apartment buildings built by developer Toplace and its subsidiaries. Toplace boasts 23 major construction projects across Sydney, including a city centre in Box Hill. But homeowners in six Toplace apartment buildings are suing the developer over serious defects and four Toplace projects are under review by regulators. So far, with that developer, I'm holding them to a very high account. But what I am very focused on is that when people give me an undertaking and they say, Commissioner, I will fix my defects, I hold them to it. In a statement, Toplay said the company invited the Commissioner to scrutinise all of its sites and is committed to fixing any defects. It said that so far only minor issues have been identified. One top place tower under investigation by the regulator is Vicinity, Corey and Leith's building in Sydney's southwest. At this point, we just don't um, really feel safe in our own home. Um, yeah, and we don't really know what the future holds anymore. Its construction involved a certifier who was later suspended over a different project and an engineer under investigation by Engineers Australia. The engineer denies any wrongdoing. He told the ABC that an investigation does not in itself result or equate to negligence or guilt. This is almost the perfect storm. We have three private players basically self-regulating all of whom have got substantial concerns with the regulators. And the poor old residents, well, they are going to have to live with the consequences. There must be a change. There must be a new way that builders and developers are held accountable for the products that they produce. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.